Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today we are deep behind the scenes here at Riverbanks, about to spend a little bit of time with our zebras, of course. I had to wear my zebra mask. Shout out to Alexis once again for your great sewing skills. This looks fantastic. Maybe the zebras will feel a little bit more comfortable with this unfamiliar face because of my zebra mask this morning. We'll have to wait and see, of course. But today we're going to be joined by Melanie, one of our mammal keepers, who you've all met before if you tuned in during our mole rat feature that we did not too long ago. But today, Melanie is off getting ready with ostriches, but we have zebras on the mind today. So we're actually going to go inside the zebra barn. I know that we've been here before, but it's been a while and it was pretty brief. And today I'm getting put to work. I've been told to put out all the carrots in their grain bins. So let's go ahead and get everything unlocked. Go ahead, I'm trying to multitask. Don't have enough hands here. Ugh. All right, everybody, we're sneaking on in. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera so that way you don't have to see just me. Let's get a good behind the scenes look. So here we are inside of our zebra and ostrich barn. Right now it is completely empty. It's just me and all of you. And we're getting these last two stalls down here ready. Now, those of you who are familiar with horses or farmyard animals, you're kind of noticing a similar design. Since these are big hoofstock animals between our two zebras and our three ostriches, you're going to notice the bottom's the same. It's kind of this cushy rubberized floor. And we have our waterer in the back, of course. And then a quick breakfast, too. And today, Melanie already got all of our grain all set up and ready. So let's go ahead and dump these in. Sorry if we're breaking up a little bit for you folks. We're just going to give a little bit in here. But don't worry, we're not going to be staying too long inside the zebra barn. We're going to go out and see them shift and prep their habitat. So hopefully you can tune in for the whole thing. So we have Forrest and Gus. Both of our zebras are going to be hanging out in here for just a second. Now mainly this barn is for safety. If we ever need to bring them in for inclement weather, there is breakfast, carrots, and a little bit of grain for our zebras. But today here inside Zebra Barn, we're gonna go ahead and get a quick little look around. They have all these different shift doors that are automatic. That way our keepers can safely open and shut things from our garage doors to all these different areas. And then of course, if we need to, our ostriches can come in here as well, but they have their outdoor paddocks this morning that they're gonna be hanging out in. So let's go ahead and turn it back around this camera. Once again, I'm juggling the rest of these carrots. I don't want to use all of them up because Melanie's going to be doing a little bit of training with our zebras as well. So let's go ahead and reshut everything. Safety is, of course, the most important thing. And zebras are very powerful animals. They're very strong and very strong-willed as well. Big personalities. So we want to make sure everything is nice and secure, of course, for them. So we'll get everything all locked up that way melanie is all ready but let's go ahead head back on outside hopefully you all can see a little bit better now that we're outdoors have a little bit better service but we're going to be heading on into this kind of back paddock area it's still behind the scenes but those of you who've been tuning into z learning you know where this is it's where we've met our ostriches for ostrich bath we've hand fed the ostriches before and today, instead of focusing just on ostriches, we're focusing on just the zebras. Now, Anna, age 10, that's a great question. How many zebras do we have? Well, not counting my mask, we have two zebras, two males. Their names are Gus and Forrest. And here in a second, they're actually going to be shifting behind the scenes. Right now, the zebra and ostrich barn is right behind me, but we might as well, since we're over here, say good morning to our ostrich friends. Let's turn around this camera quick. Somebody is having breakfast right on over here. You can check out the grain right down in there. So we have our three female ostriches. And here in a second, our zebras are actually gonna be coming down this chute right here. You kind of notice that door that's shut right on over there. And they'll come running, racing down here and head right on in to that garage door, which will be open, of course, and they will head into the barn. So that way we can secure them safely for myself and Melanie, our mammal keeper, to actually go out onto habitat and service the area. Oh, Sarah, age 13, I saw your question about why do zebras have stripes? It's not just a fashion statement, I promise. In fact, if you check out our caption today, you'll learn a little bit more about why zebras have stripes and it's actually, surprisingly enough, 
It's to keep them safe from predators. By having zebra stripes, when they hang out in big groups, it's hard to tell who is who, which means that it's harder for the predators to pick out an individual from the group. But let me go ahead and turn around this camera real quick and give a big good morning to Melanie. Nice to see you this morning. We got our zebras right behind us. Melanie, you do your thing. I think we're gonna go ahead and start shifting them in. It looks like both Forrest and Gus are ready for us to get started today. So we'll go ahead and kind of get all set up. We'll try to get a good view and let them go ahead and shift on back. Faith, I just saw your question about how fast can zebras run? They actually can be clocked in right around 35 miles per hour. So they're pretty quick animals. Um, but of course, with all of our animals here at Riverbanks, we go at their speed. If they're wanting to go a little slower today, we're gonna take it at their speed instead. And in fact, we're starting to head into that shift right here with Melanie. We're gonna kind of stay back over here so that way our zebras can focus on her instead of us. I saw a couple of different questions coming through about how old are our zebras. They're each about five years old and zebras can live to be into their 20s. But a part of the shift area is actually then closing them in so that way they get comfortable and familiar with being in a tighter space. Sorry for the plane overhead if that's <laughs> interrupting your hearing of this. But by being in this kind of squeeze area, it means that we can get a better look at our zebras, maybe for a medical procedure, so we want to keep it as a very positive environment for the zebras so that way they know that they get tons of rewards in there like carrots and melanie's doing a great job kind of multitasking and we're going to actually be heading all the way down that chute with them but forest over here is still hanging out inside the habitat y'all are wondering about zebra stripes and why they're all so different well just like how people come in all different appearances, zebras do as well. In fact, zebra stripes, it is said, are just as unique as our fingerprints. So they each have their own unique design that's just based on genetics, but we definitely can tell our boys apart based on their personalities and their stripe patterns. Oh, look at that big neck scratch. <laughs> I noticed that y'all are mentioning how much we're breaking out today. Hopefully, if you go ahead and refresh your page, maybe you'll be able to see and hear us a little bit better. Unfortunately, we can't do much about the service once we are back here. We can't really move our zebra home. <laughs> but now it's gonna be Forrest's turn to head on into our chute. Carrie was wondering, where are these zebras born? Both Forrest and Gus were actually born at an accredited zoo down in Florida before they moved here to Riverbanks heading on into the chute we're gonna go ahead and kind of take a little bit of a step back so that way he has a little bit more room to focus on what he's getting asked to do Bonnie that's great to hear that you're getting great service I don't want y'all to miss any of this here this is perfect so Jackson they eat lots of different types of fruits and veggies, but I would say that's more of a special treat in their diet. It's not going to be a big portion of their meals. Instead, most of their food comes in the form of hay and grasses, fresh leaves as well. Anna, you are absolutely correct. Our zebras love to eat apples. And sometimes they actually do get unflavored popcorn, minus, of course, the salt and the butter. Ooh, I'm seeing a lot of questions from BB and Luke actually about, can you ride zebras? Well, our zebras are wild animals. Sure, they were born in human care and they're very used to working with us, as you can see right here. But no, we definitely do not ride zebras. In fact, that has not been a very successful practice anywhere around the world. And the main reason why is zebras have a very natural wild instinct. Even though they're closely related to horses, they look a lot like horses, they behave very differently than horses. Like I said, they are definitely potentially dangerous animals. So of course we take everything at their speed. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of give them a little bit more room so that way Forrest can focus on shifting this morning. Ella was wondering why are the zebras and the ostriches actually together here at Riverbanks? 
Well, naturally, out in the grasslands of Africa, zebras and ostriches would share space. They would actually share a home range. In fact, oftentimes out in the wild, you'll notice different species spending time together to have more eyes to look out for predators. So it's a great way for us to kind of recreate that kind of mixed species habitat. Erica, you were wondering how big their habitat is. Um, I think the best way for, probably for me to explain it is here in a second, we're actually gonna head inside the habitat so you can get a, a better perspective of how big the space is. Because right now, everything that we're looking at right now is kind of behind the scenes. It's that way we can safely move these animals from place to place. In fact, you can even see some spotted friends right behind them this morning. But you notice that Melanie, our mammal keeper right now, is taking everything at forest speed. You can tell that he's a little unsure of going in, kind of goes in, kind of goes out. And that's totally fine with us. Of course, we want him to be familiar and practiced, but sometimes zebras get a little spooked. They are prey species, which means that they're always vigilant of what's going on around them. But making sure that they're comfortable and calm is our top priority. So even though Forrest has done this ever since he arrived here at Riverbanks, sometimes moods can change. Maybe a loud noise happened when he was in there last time or something caught his attention. Maybe a squirrel in the tree spooked him a little bit. So we'll take them at their speed, of course. I do need to kind of scroll back though. And Gabrielle, thank you so much for donating. We have $25 worth of donation to support Riverbanks and our mission. Thank you so, so much. We really, really appreciate all your support. Now, as we continue to kind of hang out back behind the scenes here at Zebra and Ostrich, we're gonna go ahead, give them a little bit more space because I have to be candid and, <laughs> and acknowledging the fact that I'm not a familiar face to the zebras and ostriches. They don't see me all the time, which means that I could be something that maybe makes them a little wary. Unfamiliar faces sometimes mean that the veterinarians are coming or maybe that something little different out of the norm unexpected is happening but i come bearing peace of course we want to make sure they're comfortable so we'll go ahead and kind of scooch back a little bit over here further so that way melanie can work on shifting those individuals because of course we don't actually go in with our zebras we give them their personal space for our safety but then also for them to behave naturally as zebras too oh peggy i just saw your donation come in we're up to 50 dollars. y'all are amazing Thank you so much for supporting Riverbanks. It really does mean the world to us and allows us to continue to create connections, inspire actions, and of course, impact conservation. So thank you so much for supporting Riverbanks and our mission right here. Let's go ahead and scroll through. I wanna find some of those questions that are coming in. We do, oh, just if any of you are wondering, I know I keep mentioning Forrest and Gus. There are two males. So we have a non-breeding group of zebras here, of course. Um, and that's kind of intentional. We obviously work with other zoos for lots of different breeding programs, but sometimes participation in those programs comes in the form of actually not breeding animals and housing non-breeding individuals. Because even if they're not actively breeding, they still need that high quality care, of course, and to be a part of that population, of course. Uh, Winter, I am so glad that you love the zebras as much as we do. Oh, Carson, age five, you're wondering how fast can they run? If you missed that earlier, Zebras can run right around 35 miles per hour. They're a pretty quick animal because if you imagine out in the grasslands of Africa, they gotta be fast if they don't wanna become a snack for another species. So by doing so, they not only stay in herds, hang out with other species of animals for extra eyes out on the grasslands, but they're also pretty quick too, definitely for short distances. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll through. <laughs> Chris, I think that is very funny. You know, a lot of times here at Riverbanks, we are constantly being outsmarted by the animals. It is such a pleasure to work with all of these different amazing animals and see all of their different personalities come through. But as you notice with our training session this morning, it's all about positive reinforcement. There's no punishment involved. Melanie is coaxing him through with all those different rewards, opening those different shift gates so that way he feels comfortable, so that way they can focus on a nice calm interaction. Because like I said, this is a normal part of their routine. This is something he has done over and over and over again. But every day is different, of course, and moods change, of course. 
Sometimes I have a grumpy day or sometimes I'm really perky and excited and our animals are the exact same way. They're individuals and we treat them as such too. All right, let's go ahead and, oh, Audrey H4 was wondering, how many zebras hang out together in the wild? Great question. It actually depends on the species. There are different types of zebras out in the world and some like to kind of hang out by themselves, but the variety that we have and care for here are plains zebras, not because they're plain, but because they live on the plains or the grasslands of Africa. And they like to be in very large groups of individuals. So herd size could range up into the hundreds even, but even down to just a small handful of individuals. It all depends on all those resources. They wanna make sure that they can eat. Ooh, Molly was wondering, what might snack on zebras? Definitely lions, hyenas on occasions, and maybe even leopards, and maybe some brave cheetahs. There's lots of different predators in Africa, but definitely lions are going to be their main predators. That is for sure. Oh, like, let's go ahead and find some more of these questions. Ah, oh, I love all these different shout outs for zebras. It sounds like y'all are such big zebra fans. I'm so glad we're doing a feature this morning. We are now up to three different donations. We've raised $70. It looks like Lisa went ahead and donated too. Shout out to Lisa. Thank you so much. Melanie is still working on shifting those zebras back. But like I said, we went ahead and scooched back. So those of you who are just joining us, we are here behind the scenes at Zebra and Ostrich. And we are a part of a normal routine. We are literally in amongst the typical action. So patience is a virtue, especially when you're working with animals of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Elena, age 10, was wondering what is the status of zebras in the wild? Well, plains zebras specifically, they are considered near threatened. So not endangered, not vulnerable, but near threatened. So they're a little bit further down the risk line, let's say. But other varieties of zebras, say like mountain zebras or grevy's zebras, those zebras have very different population dynamics. And unfortunately, they're not nearly as stable out in the wild. Laura, I completely agree. I think somebody might be looking for some extra snacks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Daniel, absolutely. All of our staff here at Riverbanks are wearing our masks, of course, and keeping a safe distance, of course. Oh, Stevie. Okay, this is a little off topic off of zebras, but you were wondering about the hyenas we used to have here at Riverbanks. In fact, they lived here right when I started working and was a part of the Riverbanks family. But our two hyenas actually moved to another zoo. They were transferred years ago, almost five years ago now, to the Phoenix Zoo in Arizona. And they have their own habitat there and they have been thriving. Our collection is constantly changing. We're moving animals, working together with other zoos. And that is such a great example of that. Y'all are sending in such great questions. Keep them coming. Uh, we'll go ahead and try to see if I can scroll through all of them as we go. It is so great to see all of you. Now we are ready and waiting for once that shifting does happen successfully and we officially get our zebras out, that eventually we'll kind of prep the area and get the habitat all ready for them today. Now, Anna was wondering, how long do zebras typically live for? Well, her average lifespan is usually around into their 20s. So about our five-year-old individuals are pretty young but I just saw another question come in from Hannah. By the way, shout out to Hannah. Hannah's my cousin. She actually lives in South Dakota. Nice to see you tuning in live. But you were wondering about those zebra stripes. There are definitely noticeable differences between the different types of zebras. Plains zebras, for example, kind of match my mask. They have really thick stripes with really chunky blocks. Whereas grevy zebras, those really big zebras, they have really thin stripes. I encourage you all to do a Google search later on after we're done live here. And I would encourage you to check out what they look like because they all have their own unique appearance. Now, right now we are still hanging out behind the scenes using our patience, of course, while our zebras decide to kind of go around their business. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera though. You're probably done seeing my face. The zebras are super curious of us over here. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to make our way past the zebras and we're actually going to head further down the chute. Hopefully that will help out Melanie a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn around this camera again. You do your thing. You keep on doing We're going to head on over here. They are doing their own thing today, which is perfectly fine. So I think we should go ahead, head on over, 
see what our ostriches are doing. Maybe I'm the variable that's throwing off our zebras this morning. So let's go ahead and turn around this camera and say good morning to one of our ostriches. Check out, somebody's having breakfast this morning. I gotta be careful of my equipment though. Our ostriches love the shiny pieces of our camera equipment. <laughs> But we have three female ostriches here. And if you've tuned into Z-Learning before, we have done big bath sessions with our ostriches. We've shifted with them before as well. And right now they're hanging out in their little behind the scenes areas as well. And eventually they too will shift out on habitat for the day. But those of you who haven't caught that Z-Learning feature with our ostriches, I encourage you to check out our YouTube channel. It's Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Just go ahead and search that on YouTube. You'll find our channel and we actually have every single Z learning feature up there. It's an easy way for anybody that you know that doesn't have a Facebook account to still tune in for all those features. We always post them the same day that we do all of this different exciting stuff. So that way you can share them with friends and family that maybe need a little bit of zebra and ostrich in their life. <laughs> Let's go ahead and scroll through some more of these questions and see what y'all are wondering about. Ooh, Don was wondering, what do ostriches eat? Well, today they're probably having a little bit of soybeans, probably some carrots as well, um, but they definitely much prefer vegetation. They're not super keen on eating meat. They are vegetarians, of course, but our zebras are starting to head into our shoot right now. Oh, Don, you were also wondering, do we trim our ostrich wings? We actually don't. They um, keep them preened themselves and care for them on their own. Um, and of course, since ostriches don't fly, they really have those feathers to stay warm, cool off, of course, too. But we do not trim those <laughs> feathers whatsoever. That'd be a pretty big task just considering their very large size. Ryan, age five, was wondering how tall do the zebras get? We're gonna even scooch a little bit further back so that way we're not in Melanie's way. Um, that also ranges based on the species as well. I know that we had talked about grevy zebra, mountain zebras, plain zebras. The variety that we care for here at Riverbanks is actually the smallest species of zebra. They are considered to be the shortest. In fact, a grevy zebra is taller than I am. In fact, sometimes they measure about five feet high at the shoulder, let alone their big head over top. They're a very big animal. But let me go ahead and turn around this camera because we officially have zebras in the chute. You know, a little patience goes a really long way with animals. And now what we are going to do is Melanie is going to actually head on back She's going to be shifting the boys back into the barn. We're gonna stay out here though. You're good to go. Yep. We're gonna hang it down over here. And eventually here in just a little bit, we're actually going to head into that zebra and ostrich habitat. So keep tuning in because here in a second, we're going to go out into the exhibit and get put to work because our ostriches are so ready to head on out there. They've already had their breakfast. They were waiting patiently for their neighbors, the zebras. But let's go ahead and turn this camera around because you wanna see our our zebra boys, of course. Now this shoot area that they are in right now, once again, leads over to that garage door. You can see that it just opened up. Melanie's gonna be calling them in and we might actually need to move once again, just to make sure that the zebra boys are comfortable. So that way they're going where they need to, of course. Oh, but of course we gotta take a little bit of a bathroom break quick. <laughs> Y'all are getting the full Z learning effect over here at zebra and ostrich. Let's go ahead and kind of make our way over here, kind of walk with the zebras. Hopefully they're gonna make their way with us this morning as we head down closer to their barn so that way we can get them secured to go ahead and head them out on habitat this morning. So however we can set them up for success, that's what we are all about. But we have to do it safely, of course, too. We can't just go in there and ask them to go do something. They do know their names, though, and that training is extra important. But we're going to kind of hang around over here. Melanie's actually over here near the barn, waiting to kind of shift the boys back and in. And we might just have to kind of play it by ear this morning. This Z-Learning is so authentic for all of you who've been tuning in. You've always been wondering, how do we coordinate all these different things? Well, it takes a bit of coordination, but we always gamble it because the animals do get to make their choices. <laughs> and if they want to take their sweet time, they're absolutely more than welcome to. <laughs> so we're opening up the garage door. 
making sure that they have the option to head on back. But you know what? At the end of the day, the zebras might just not be in the mood to get on into their barn. I guess they didn't realize that I went ahead and dumped some delicious carrots in those grain bins that they should be wanting to zip on back there, run on in and have their breakfast. I guess they're not super hungry this morning. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> Let's go ahead and scroll through, see if I can find more questions that y'all are wondering. Good morning, everybody. It is so great to see all of you still tuning in live for our Z learning features. Oh, keep all these different questions coming. Oh, Camden, you were wondering about the ostriches again. Let's actually head on over here. We're right next to one of our ostriches hanging out right here next to us. She's kind of she's impatiently waiting for our zebras. They're not super keen on shifting this morning, but let's go ahead and zoom in on those ostriches. You can see all of those different feathers that droop down from their wings. But since they're part of the bird family, Camden, you were wondering, well, why do they have wings if they can't fly? Well, those wings can actually be used as balance. Um, when they're running at really fast speeds, they can actually use them to kind of steer which direction they're going. So that way they can really get up and go, just like those zebras do as well. Ooh, great view of those wings. It's like almost that she heard us. But they also use them to fan themselves out, um, to make themselves look bigger too when they're posturing and trying to display for other ostriches or even predators as well. It's a great way to kind of ward off predators. Megan was wondering, do we brush our zebras? We really kind of don't. They do a lot of their own grooming themselves. They roll around in the dirt. They like to get rained on every once in a while. They don't like the hose though, not like the ostriches do. Um, but no, we do not brush them like you might a horse. We kind of let them naturally kind of clean themselves off instead. Danica was wondering, do all zebras have stripes? Yes, they do. In fact, there are some unique cases where zebras have a whole bunch of stripes that kind of close together and touch, um, and they almost look more black than they are white. All those individuals are different, so it just kind of depends on all of those different appearances. But regardless, if we actually see our zebras head out on habitat, y'all got a really neat behind the scenes view this morning. That way you were able to see inside of the zebra barn into all that shifting, a great perspective of what reality looks like here when we're taking everything at animal speed, of course, but we gotta safely get them back before we can do our next step. But our next step might actually be done when the camera is turned off because Gosh, we've been talking for a long time all about zebras, but thank you all so much for continuing to tune in. Gabrielle was wondering, is there a reason why we have all female ostriches here? Well, just like the reason why we have all male zebras, we do that intentionally. We have non-breeding groups of animals. Some individual animals have very robust populations in human care, and our goal isn't to necessarily breed them. Instead, that we take care of them, create connections with them, and of course, pamper them beyond belief. But Terry, you're absolutely right. Zebras do love to eat apples just like horses do. I cannot thank you all enough for sending in all these great comments and questions. I will be jumping on the comments later on today to answer all those things that you might be curious about. So keep them coming in. But I do wanna remind all of you while we're kind of paused right back here, tune in live tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for a very special birthday party I'll go ahead and tell you who it's for. It's for one of our penguins. Those of you who remember, Elmer the penguin who was hatched last year at Riverbanks is now one years old. I cannot believe it's been one year since our bird keepers repaired his egg with Elmer's glue and he successfully hatched and has been thriving at Riverbanks for the last year. So we are gonna go hang out with our penguins, cool down in the coolest habitat at the zoo and really get an up close view and hopefully Get a peek at the birthday boy himself tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. We'll hope to see you all then. But in the meantime, we're going to let the zebras do their own thing this morning. And we are going to wrap up here at Z Learning this morning. So thank you all so much for tuning in and we will see you tomorrow morning.